Training Module 6.5 Evaluation of Simulation Results. In the main menu, there is the Field Data button. And the learning objective of this training model is to understand how to evaluate the simulations with field data. Here we see the calculation scheme of AquaCrop. At the end of the simulation, we get the yield. And the simulated yield might be different from the observed yield. The measured yield can now be used to assess the simulation in AquaCrop. By just changing the harvest index, it is very easy to match the simulated yield with the observed yield. However, that might not be a good practice because the error in the simulation might be the result of an error in the simulation of biomass or transpiration or CC. By understanding the different steps in the calculation of final yield, so we are going to run a series of checks which starts at the first step of the calculation procedure, namely with green canopy cover. If that is okay, then we should check transpiration. If that is okay, then we should check biomass and finally we can check the simulation of the final yield. So the structure of this module shows the sequence of checks which one has to run in case there is a mismatch between simulated and observed data. Let's start with the green canopy cover. Green canopy cover is simulated by considering conservative crop parameters. These we do not have to change. But there were also non-conservative parameters, like the initial and the maximum canopy cover, CC0 and CCX. Their value depends on the plant density. And there are also cultivar-specific parameters, like the crop phenology, the length of the different stages, the length of the crop cycle, and when flowering occurs. So the mismatch of the simulation might be due to not proper tuning of the non-conservative crop parameters. So we have to check the finer tuned crop parameters in the crop file. Here we see the canopy development in the absence of any stress as displayed in the crop file. But in reality, you might have a much longer crop cycle and a lower canopy cover. And also the flowering, which determines the period of potential vegetative growth, might become later. So the first thing to do is to check if the crop file was properly tuned. In the crop file, we find a canopy development in the absence of any stress. However, when we run the simulation, the simulated canopy cover might be far different from the canopy development in the crop file. This is the result of water stresses, soil fertility stresses, soil salinity stresses, and so on and so forth. In aqua crop, we can assess the simulated canopy cover with canopy cover observed in the field. Let us see how canopy cover is collected in the field. Well, the first option is just to estimate the canopy cover by eye. Or we can use a graduated ruler and estimate the shadowed path on that ruler. Or we can take a picture. These are overhead pictures of the canopy. And if the canopy is large, the camera should be sufficient above the canopy to take representative pictures. So with the help of software, we can now assess the canopy cover. 
These days we can also use drones to take pictures. They can zoom in to get high precision data. Here we find a list of software which is available to estimate canopy cover from digital pictures. The top table is freeware. Whatever software is used, one should always eliminate the borders of the picture. So because of the wide angle of the lens, the crop in the borders of the picture are distorted. The next thing is to select a green color. The green color should match with the green canopy cover. So by trial and error, we can find a good setting which wipe out the green canopy cover and express that then per unit of surface. It is a good practice to take several pictures from the same field to get an average of the canopy cover. Now, this data is now entered in AquaCrop to assess the canopy cover. Let me show you that in AquaCrop. Observer data used to evaluate or simulations can be saved on disk by clicking here on the field data button. Here you can enter the field data. And it consists in, first of all, specifying a first day. For example, the 1st of January. And we can link it to a year as well for the year 2000. Then here I specify that on day 75, which corresponds to the 15th of March, I have my first observation of the green canopy cover, which was 10%. Here I enter the standard deviation because I took several pictures and that correspond with 2%. The next observation was on day 120, which corresponds with 20 of April. And CC was increased at that moment to 25%. I have no standard deviation because I only took a few pictures. So in this list, I enter for days on which data was observed the green canopy cover. So when all the data is entered, I can save that on disk and use the data saved for the assessment of the simulation. For the sake of the exercise, let me just take an existing file which has already data. Let me show you the data. So the first day of measurements was the 22nd of March and at those days we have CC, dry above ground biomass and soil water contents. I have loaded this field data and when I run now a simulation, we see here an extra button in the simulation run menu. If I click on it, AquaCrop allows me now to compare the simulated data with the observed data. Let us first look at the canopy cover. In green, we see the simulated data and the black dots are the observations. The vertical black line corresponds with the standard deviation. I can see the values numerically, but I can also look at a statistical evaluation. I have several statistical indicators which shows me the goodness of fit between the observed and simulated data. The green dots shows me the goodness of fit. The more dots there are, the better the fit. For poor matches, the dots will be red. 
by dragging the cursor over the value, Aquacrop shows me which values gives a perfect match. So in Aquacrop, we have checked the goodness of fit. Now, if there is a poor fit between observed and simulated canopy cover, there might be a problem with the simulation of soil fertility. Due to soil fertility stress, the canopy was lower than what is simulated. Therefore, we should see if there is indeed an agreement between the amount of fertilizers applied in the field and the setting of soil fertility stress in the field management menu. Due to fertility stress, indeed, a smaller canopy cover is simulated. If we have checked the soil fertility stress, we should also check soil salinity stress. Also, soil salinity stress affects the canopy development. When starting a simulation, we first have to enter the initial soil content in the root zone by specifying the electric conductivity. Subsequently, Aquacrop will update every day its soil balance by considering the quality of the irrigation water and the quality of the groundwater. So we need to check if the electric conductivity of the irrigation water and the groundwater is properly specified. Salts enter by irrigation and by capillary rise and are removed by excess irrigation or rainfall to the groundwater table. The presence of salts in the root zone also result in a lower canopy cover. If we have checked soil fertility stress and soil salinity stress, the mismatch between observed and simulated canopy cover might be due to soil water stress. Therefore, we have to check the simulation of the soil water content in the root zone. Since this will also affect transpiration, I will explain that in the next point.